I can confirm that it is related to an anti-satellite capability that Russia is developing. America is sleepwalking into a new age of military and homeland vulnerability, and political leaders need to tell the public the uncomfortable truth. This is not an active capability that's been deployed. And though Russia's pursuit of this particular capability is troubling, there is no immediate threat to anyone's safety. We are not talking about a weapon that can be used to attack human beings or cause physical destruction here on Earth. Satellites are vital to nearly every aspect of American life and commerce, as well as national defense. Destroying them would send the U.S. into a communications blackout with untold consequences. This would enable them to target satellites and communications and GPS capabilities, but it also, more importantly, would be able to potentially be an EMP that could target the entire U.S. grid and all electronics. Uh, so this is way beyond space, and this would be a new capability that we have effectively uh, no defense against. It was House Intelligence Committee Chairman Mike Turner that warned of this new security threat, and credit is due to the Ohio Republican for doing a public service. Disappointing, but perhaps unsurprising, is some GOP critics' suggestion that this is all just a plot to drum up more support in Congress for the weapons package for Ukraine. This is going to be, I, I think, an all-of-government response, diplomatic, informational, military, economic, uh, but we need to see a strategy and a plan uh, from this administration. Mr. Waltz is right. The Russian threat that Mr. Turner cites either exists or it doesn't. And asking the Biden administration to declassify information on the threat so the public can judge for itself is a good move. This is, after all, the administration that told us that the Afghan government wouldn't fall if the US withdrew its troops from the country. The intelligence community has serious concerns about a, about a broad declassification of this intelligence. They also assess that starting with private engagement rather than immediately publicizing the intelligence could be a much more effective approach. We agree with that, which is consistent, of course, with the manner in which we have conducted downgrades of information in the past. The reality is the military threat in space is real and it's growing. In just the last few years, the quantity and quality of counterspace threats has increased significantly. Speaking to Congress last year, a Pentagon official provided some context, starting with China. China has already fielded ground-based counterspace weapons, including direct ascent ASAT missiles, and it continues to seek new methods to hold our satellites at risk. China is building a space architecture that enables its military to execute long-range precision strikes. China ultimately seeks to challenge our ability to conduct joint operations in the Indo-Pacific. Mr. Plum then turned his attention to Russia. Russia is developing, testing, and fielding its own counterspace systems, including ground-based and space-based kinetic anti-satellite weapons. These are aimed at degrading and denying U.S. space-based services. So given that these threats have been increasing significantly in recent years, what is it that makes the Biden administration think that this can all be handled with U.S. restraint and arms control? We must write the new rules of the road. In 2022, Kamala Harris, who chairs the National Space Council, gave a speech in which she acknowledged that space debris, such as that caused by missile tests by Russia and China, could damage satellites orbiting in space. These tests are part of their efforts to develop anti-satellite weapons systems. These weapons are intended to deny the United States our ability to use our space capabilities, destroying our satellites, satellites which are critical to our national security. But then, if you can believe it, came this. As of today, the United States commits not to conduct destructive, direct ascent anti-satellite missile testing. The unhappy reality is that U.S. satellites are large and vulnerable to attack. Military officials have known this for some time, and while details are classified, the general approach is to rely on smaller satellites and more of them, and making each one better able to withstand an enemy's anti-satellite weapons. This takes money, and the Senate's 2024 defense spending bill increases space investments by 9%. There's $3 billion for 15 launch vehicles and range upgrades, 
and there's $4.7 billion for protected and jam-resistant satellite communications. But if Congress fails to pass the bill and instead lapses into a continuing resolution, the Space Force would lose $2.8 billion in spending. That's nearly a tenth of its budget. We're taking this potential threat very, very seriously, and we are examining what the, the, the best next steps are and what our options might be. I want to re reiterate, it is not an active capability, and it has not yet been deployed. Political complacency about space war is part of a larger refusal by American elites to educate the public about U.S. vulnerability to new military technologies. The liberal internationalists in the Biden administration don't want to highlight threats on their watch, threats they believe can be made better with treaties. We will lead by example. Meanwhile, the GOP's isolationist wing wants to spend less money on defense and cede global spheres of influence to Russia, China, and Iran. Hats off to Mike Turner for trying to wake up the sleepwalkers.